Oh, what are you doing? Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Now, like, comment, and share. This isn't the right kind of cup. <laughs> it must, it's not. It's got not, not got enough glue to it. Yeah, no. And, well, you know, our props department is... What, whatever we can find in the house. Yeah, pretty much. All right. <laughs> so, well, uh, hello. It's going to blow your fucking mind if this becomes our highest rated video and most shared. Yeah, if they, they subscribe and uh, I'll click the bell. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> so, um, this this time we're doing a, uh, a holiday special. Mm. So, I've seen by a few holiday special with Nick. And me. In case you don't know, my name is Lance. It should be in the title, if yeah. nothing else. Um, so, this month i mean we picked up two holidays to do mm -hmm. we figured just june itself was one and the other one was juneteenth mm -hmm. and we kicked around a couple ideas but one I, that we ended up settling on was get out yes because both it's a uh, movie we'd probably feel like talking about because it's like spoiler alert good mm. and then just because it's it fits the theme the kind of the theme of it or whatever. i know that we said that we're not going to talk about what we think about the movies before mm -hmm. we start the video but honestly when you say stuff like that before we give our numbers it makes me really nervous about what i've already pre-picked for you so okay. I mean, if you if you want to flip it around okay. no i'm not going to change anything i already made my decision i'd be cheating if i changed it at this point well, i mean good good to me is a six or higher Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's it's it average would be five. So, okay. Okay. All right. I feel, yeah. I feel a little better. All right. <laughs> okay. But anyways, watch Lance freak out in, in in real time as he tries it over this little thing that he wanted to do because we usually just say our numbers. And he's like, I want to start predicting. I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, you and know, now, now he takes it all serious. I think it, I think it's just I think it's fun. You yeah, know, it's, you a, just... it's a it's a thing for us to do. But yeah. Anyways. All right. So. So do we want to start with um. Given ratings, yes, and then we're gonna talk pretty much about what's going on in the movie, and mm -hmm. with no rhyme or reason for plot points. Well, we, we generally don't give away the entire movie, but we give away enough stuff that if you've not seen the movie, you're probably gonna not, not want to watch after numbers at least. We talk about the finer points of the stuff that we really liked about the flick, mm -hmm. and we intentionally leave a lot of stuff out. So, like, we're not for those who never hear the warning part about turn off the movie because or, of spoilers or, there's been some movies that i would never have like i don't want to watch that movie and mm. then i watch a bunch of people talk about the movie and hit plot points and i'm like actually you know what that sounds kind of good okay and then, I, and then i go back and watch it well uh, so if anything moving forward the the major format of needs to be like this is what we liked about the movie that mm -hmm. is kind of spoilerish and no, I'm, the... I'm gonna give spoilers We'll just, we'll just blanket statement spoiler, because sometimes I want to talk about the very important... I mean, if we're going to talk about Sixth Sense, there's one very important thing we'd probably talk about, which would ruin the entire movie. But, like, that one's already been, like, put out there all over the place. I know, but still, some people haven't seen it, so... I know that before I saw The Sixth Sense, I knew what the, the turn was, and it ruined the movie. Yeah, if you're it's... 70, you might not have heard the spoiler, because you don't know what memes are. Well, I don't know. I've been uh, on YouTube watching a bunch of people reacting to, like, old-school movies, and people seeing things that, like, they've just... They're, they're young, so they missed them. Mm. Okay. So it's kind of like going back, watching classic movies, and now it's new to you. You weren't or you weren't around when they were in the theater, and everyone's like, did you see that thing, and this thing happened? You're like, shut up. It's been out for a week. I don't have a car. I'm a kid. That's true. All right. Good point. Good All point. Right. All right. So, so um, shall I start with, with my with my rating first, since that, that's the, uh, the one in question? Yes. Um, so I do like this movie a, a decent amount. I've watched it twice now. I can see myself going back and watching it again at some point in time in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to give it an eight. Fuck. All right. So I've been off by one on most weeks, but... Ooh, off by two. Yeah, I'm off by... Okay, so I, sh I was over by one. Oh, it's a nine so, with a hat. Yes, I, I like it's a, it's this is a ghost nine, so it's got a it's got a halo. Mm. But um, okay, well I was off by two this week. Shit, you gave me the offer to go and change it. I should have changed it because I was going to pick seven. But all right, fine, eight. That's okay. Um, so I would give this movie. I'd give it a seven. Oh. All right, he's. Really good at guessing what I'm going to get. Um, yeah, I, I I really really like this flick. Mm -hmm. um, I have my gripes about it, um, and it's okay. and it's to me they're not pedantic gripes, but um, but we'll get into all that later. So all right, so there's our there's what we think of it. If at, at this point in time you've caught a few of our videos and you know kind of what our styles are, 
you know what to expect from it because otherwise we're going to give you time to reach for a remote and hit the stop button mm -hmm. or hit the back button or hit the pause button or just mm -hmm. hit the like button and then hit the back button that'd be amazing all right and i think they've had plenty of time yep so spoilers yeah if you're not gone already do so now and snake kills dumbledore all right so <laughs> um so uh you go ahead and kick off this wagon train what is something you really dug about this flick um I, I don't know. I think it's kind of like the entire premise of it is kind of interesting. And there's a bunch of little stuff in it. Um, I think my favorite character is Rose. Mm -hmm. Just because she starts off like all sweet and stuff like that. And then just like that turn happens and she just goes like full on psychotic. Mm -hmm. And I find that kind of amusing. Like, yeah. Like at the end when he's like choking her out and she's like goes from pleading or she goes from pleading and then he starts choking her out. And then she just like drops the act and like smiles at him. <laughs> Yeah, and it just like creeps him out. <laughs> She's like, "You like this, don't you?" Yeah, or something like that. Or just be like, "Yeah, it's it's it, the bad is in all of us," or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's just or just she's just crazy. She's just crazy. I, yeah, I think she's just straight up crazy. Um, but she's like the honey trap, and then you know the brother is like the uh, one of the, the enforcers. <laughs> yeah, he's the one of the enforcers. The dad is the the surgeon, and the mom is the the, I, the hypnotist. The hypnotist. Yeah, and then yeah. Um, so, so the movie's directed by Jordan Peele. Mm -hmm. um, you, a lot of people probably know him from Key and Peele. Mm -hmm. That's where I know him from. Right. Um, and he, I think this was his debut directorial. Like, I, th I think so, too. Yeah, this is his first outing. And um, man, what an outing. So, this one's good. Um, so I'll go ahead and give you my impressions of the movie. Um, I really dug this movie the first time I watched it. But i got to be honest with you. I was utterly fucking confused. Really? And it, but it was to me it was like the creep factor in the beginning of it because I really didn't know what to expect from it. But like mm -hmm. when they have all the people over for the silent auction, yeah, and like, they're, just, they're just all talking to them. Yeah, and they're all like you know like oh you look strong and is it here was it true what I hear about but you know uh, yeah and like it just the way that everyone was talking to him. But like the part that really like really geeked me out was when they go when he goes upstairs and they're all like blah, 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 blah. and when he goes upstairs they're all like. Yeah, and the house gets like completely silent. And I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" <laughs> you know, like that. That, and I, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure that was the intended reaction mm -hmm. because it's still somewhat veiled until you see the guy outside doing the. Yeah, that's a silent auction. Yeah, and they're just doing the silent auction. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure he could have just looked out of his fucking window, like his bedroom window, because I think it overlooked the backyard. They were up at the um the front of the lake at that point in time. Okay, so right. him him he was with Rose. And Rose was like occupying him mm -hmm. while they did the auction part. It's when he went upstairs is when he um, play, he, he checked his phone, mm -hmm. and the um, the housekeeper, the grandmother was up was upstairs, and he just kind of being like, "I'm sorry, I unplugged your cellular telephone." And you're like, who calls it a cellular telephone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and that it was little things like that that really kind of bugged me. And it, so, what I did like about the movie mm -hmm. was the like the old school creepy vibe of the movie mm -hmm. um how something's definitely going on but it's hard like what's going on is it's so obfuscated and it's so fucky at the end when the turn comes up that mm -hmm. you're just like okay and like that feels it feels like a storyline straight out of like an old 50s movie mm. where it's like there we're not really going to try and explain it away like with any kind of like logic or anything like that it's just kind of this is the crazy shit we're doing so just go with it. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, the whole process is we hypnotize you, we push your sense of self down, mm -hmm. and then so we, we have to keep enough of your brain there for the higher functions, or whatever or the of the body, the stem, like the yeah, the, yeah. the the very stem, and we, then we they gotta, we got to keep enough of, of your brain for the for it to work the body, but then the new brain gets connected and kind of like takes over the thinking yeah. part. Then they take they take the the bulk of the brain from the the whoever the enfeebled person mm -hmm. put it in the new body and then it connects mm -hmm. and it's like you become an operating system and then they're just like basically the programming or they're the programming he's you're the programming and they're the operating system yeah, or whatever or yeah it'd be like you're the motor they're the car yeah 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 so um and and it's just so like that whole process is just so odd and like it, making him comfortable I guess so he doesn't like geek out and try and take over the body or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like with the whole, the guy, you know, the 
look at the cloaca or whatever the fuck the process is called. I forget what it's called. Um, but it sounds... The coagula? Yeah, the coagula or something like that. But it's, to me, it's like the clo- look cloaca. Look at the clo- cloaca. Look at the cloaca. It's just funnier to say wacka. Um, but yeah, it's I, I really dug the movie. Um, to me, a lot of stuff wasn't obvious. Like, mm-hmm. you know, usually I'm pretty good at calling shit. But like, what I think I liked best, best about the movie was the TSA agent. Oh, yeah. um, like his best friend, <laughs> yeah, uh, who was, was played his... by uh, Rel, L- Lil Rel How- Howry. How played, played Rob, right? Yeah, he okay. played Rod, and like I fucking loved him because yeah, he's great because he's like calling shit right. Oh yeah, like, like inter- don't go in that house. Yeah, don't go in that house, or you need <laughs> you need to fuck out of there right now. Like he was basically he was calling it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he, he had a lot of good moments, like when um, like the when Chris showed the picture to him and he like called him up real quick and he's like, hey, that's. I can't remember the the the, the, the um. So that was Andre. Oh uh, yeah, that's Dre. Yeah, and, like he went missing. Like and, I mean, he went with the sex slaves things, but like, but them old people are kidnapping people and doing yeah. some weird shit to them and then, like turn them into sex slaves and yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that, it, but I mean, he was he was like the Walter in Big Lebowski. He was that mm. character because like. He seems like he's insane, but he he got he got it like eighty percent. Yeah, but he's like calling a lot of the right shots. Um, but like that guy was the best to me yeah, in that good. movie. He was good. But um, but yeah, it, it's uh, so just to cover a few quick names, and we tried to look up some of these things so we don't like completely butcher their names. But it had Daniel Kaluuya as Chris, and then it had Allison Williams as Rose, and those were your two primaries in the movie. Yeah. Um, you had Bradley Whitford as Dr. Armitage. Which he, he looks familiar. Like, I've seen him in things, but I don't think I could place him in stuff. So I did a quick look. So he, I think his big one was West Wing. He played um, Josh seen, in the West Wing. I have never seen West Wing. Uh, he was in Cabin in the Woods. Um, okay. At, so he, I think he was one, of the, one of the scientists. Yeah, he was. He, I think he was the guy that was like, um, "It's never fucking the merman. merman," or I, it might, that might not be him. I don't know that it was or not. Yeah, but, in my head, I'm seeing the actor, and I don't think it was the same guy. But yeah, I, I don't think. I so. actually think it was because they've got Richard Jenkins and him side by side. Okay. In may, the may, pick, maybe. So I'm pretty sure that was him. So that, that might be where I recognize him from. Um, the mother, of course, I recognize. Yeah, from Forty Year Old Virgin. Yeah. Okay, I was I was wondering if you were gonna pick some kind of like crazy other movie that I've never seen. Well, she but... was also the the mom and Step Brothers, I think, right? Yes. Which that was no, that was I think that was Mary Steen Virgin or something like that. Was it not the same? No, so that's not so Step Brothers. That wasn't the same one. I think that was might have been. Mary Steenburgen. It was the mom from. It was the same woman that was in Back to the Future Three. That Doc ends up hooking up with. Okay, I guess I don't remember. I think her name is Mary Steenburgen. I might be wrong, um, but anyways, while you look that up, I'll keep going on with the cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had Caleb Landry Jones. So anyways, uh, so it was Catherine Catherine Keener, um, who is the mom uh, that was also in Forty Year Old Virgin, best movie ever made. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that, but it was. But it was... Oh, it's fucking great! It's, it's what that's that's one of my guilty pleasure movies. Okay, it is Mary Steenburgen as Nancy Huff. Yes. Okay. So I guess I just can confuse the two of them. Yeah, she's she's old. She's an old school actress. Okay. So, and now she shows up as like naughty mom on stuff. So, <laughs> um, and then some of the highlights for me in the movie: Stephen Root. I fucking love Stephen Root. He was the blind. Um, oh, okay. Photographer. He looks familiar, but I don't. I don't know what I see. What I've seen him in. So him. the primary you would know him from oh, his office space. Okay, he's the. It's my stapler. It's my stapler. I believe. Okay. I believe you have my stapler. All right, I, I, I don't know who he is. In. Okay, I'm gonna burn it back to the ground. Um, he was in Dodgeball. Yeah. Um, he plays uh, Bill in King of the Hill. I don't like King of the Hill. That's come on now. Um, uh, he's he's just in a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had you ever seen um, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs? No, I don't, don't think I've ever even heard of it. Okay, he's pan shot in that, and he's fucking great, and you're not going to get that. But then one day you're going to watch it, and you're going to be like, okay. But um, anyways, so that's Stephen Root. He's one of my uh, favorite um, that guy actors. Kind of like bit actors or whatever. Yeah. Um, then, of course, you had Lil Rel Howery and as Rod. Um, let's see, is there any other names of note? I, I don't think there was anyone else that really, like, jumped out at me, I guess. Yeah, no, there's a lot of, like, 
great people in here, but like that's that's the ones I think that's the main ones. Mm-hmm. And then you had Marcus uh, Henderson. He was Walter. That was the granddad. Okay. And uh, Betty Gabrielle as Georgina. That was the mo- that was the grandma. Yeah. And then Lakeith Stanfeld. That was Andre. Yeah, the Dre. Um, yeah. And that 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 about covers it. Um, but yeah, like great cast, great acting, interesting storyline that hasn't mm-hmm. really been done before. Um, yeah, in my opinion. No, it's, I mean, it's just kind of harken, harkening back to the old slave trade and stuff like that. More rich white people using the bodies of black people. Yeah. Very symbolic and stuff like that, which is, it's, it's an, it makes for an interesting watch. Definitely. But and, I mean. So I, the, this movie in the end, like if, if I watched it and I mean, it's a horror movie mm. and usually in horror movies, like shit doesn't go well for the protagonists mm-hmm. and in this one at the end of it like they get away and i think if they didn't get away this movie would have been like a seven for me like the fact that at the end like that cop shows up i was expecting him to get like shot down by cops because they show up and there's a you know a black man choking out a little white lady on the ground mm-hmm. like I, I i was that thing pulled up and i was expecting him to get gunned down and for it to be a dour ending and be like man fuck this movie but in the end he got in and like his rod looks at him and it's just like Told, told you not to go in that house. Yeah. Then the movie's over, and I'm like, that's great. How'd you know? I'm in the T motherfucking essay. <laughs> T motherfucking essay. Yeah, that's he was just that dude was so good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a uh, it was one of those flicks that just like completely caught me out of left field, and and the reason I say that is, like, I literally sat down not knowing what to what to expect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it has that opening where like the dude, like the first dude, gets gets caught. Yeah, he's just walking down the walking down the neighborhood. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's the brother. Yeah, yeah. So I believe he was just a general collector. Oh yeah, he just drove around and would see somebody and snatch him up. Yeah, and then you had the daughter who was working the other angle. She was a honey trap that was basically pulling people in. But it seemed like she was also there to um, mod or modify behavior a little bit because like the guy. Chris was a smoker and she's like, you need to stop smoking and did all this shit to try to get him to stop. And I think was to make the, his body better so that they could sell a superior product as it were. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of the angle she went, whereas the brother just kind of snatched people up and young, healthy body. Uh, yeah. And the guy that bought it was, um, an old white dude that was blind. Like mm-hmm. it's a dude, take what you fucking get. Well, I think that's kind of what he says himself. He's like, I don't, it's just a way for me to get the eyes back. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not like, the personal. I, it's, I just want your eyes. Yeah. I, I like you. You're good. So, so, I mean, if that's the case, like I would imagine stemming eyes to a body is easier than fusing fucking brain bits together. Maybe, but they're not selling eyes. Yeah. I mean, but <laughs> still. I mean, if you're a neurosurgeon and you're like, could you fix my eyes, please? He's not going to be like, gotcha. I mean, those are different different shits. Just because someone can stitch a hand together doesn't mean they can stitch a brain and vice versa. I'm just saying, if it's a more complicated process... You would think it'd be plausible, yeah. Yeah, but then again... But I mean, also you're getting a new young body, too. Yeah, and now I'm just, just tugging at threads. But, yeah. like, uh, it, the the mo- is do I think the movie's a perfect movie? No. No. Um, it, it's, it, when it hits the turn, like, all of it is perfectly reasonable until you realize... Like, you can't get rid of the id of the brain, mm-hmm. but you can suppress it. Yeah. So it seems like, in a way, that that little family is making customers for life. Because, I mean, you see a flashing light. Now you've got to pull the person back for the mom to to re, like, sink or whatever. But in a world of flashing fucking lights, talk about, like, a liability. Yeah, so imagine how, how much money do you think she makes for that? Just bring, just bring your uh, bring your husband in for a tune up. We'll uh, suppress the suppress the uh, the Ed back down. So what happens when that that personality jumps up in Dre, and he chokes that old bitch out, <laughs> and they have to go out and catch that dude? Now it's like, okay, we're gonna resell this thing. He's only killed one white woman, so you know, I mean, still pretty good. So, but yeah, it's just that that's I get it. You know, you could bring him back, and they could pay to like put the person back under or resuppress the the original Ed, but like. That is like a huge fucking gamble. That's a huge flaw. Uh, well, I also get the sense that these people don't go out into the world. Mm, yeah, okay. It's, it seems like they are a upper society. They probably only communicate with each other, and they all are in on it. Yeah, that's true. 
That's true. So you go to those parties, no one's flashing cameras. Yeah, and then Chris like just kind of took that one on the sly. Yeah. Um, I don't think these people are dealing with uh, phones in their pockets. They're, they're kind of uh, yeah. elderly elderly folk. Flip phones, mostly, I, yeah. I would imagine. I don't um, think they've got a lot of flashing lights to deal with. They're, bag Bag phones. It's just kind of was one of the amusing parts too. You take like the grandmother and the grandfather, throw them into a young body and they have them try to pretend to be young and it's just not work in the least bit. It's like you can, like the way they talk is just kind of off. Yeah. Like everyone was definitely weird. And I, that was like the huge marker for Chris. Like when he's just kind of like standing around listening to people. You know, so let's walk up to him. Well, we walked up to the grandfather and it's like, it's nice to see another, another brother around here. And he's like, Oh yes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah how amusing yeah but it was also like the little tiny things like um the first time he goes out like sneak a cigarette mm -hmm. out back yeah. and like the the dude is like running it's just laps it's just charging right the fuck out yeah he, and just running him running straight at him and then does that weird and like just turns and runs the other direction mm -hmm. like that was just like it's little things like that that you know it's off-putting. Yeah, it keeps the intrigue. Like, what the fuck is actually happening here? It's in that same scene as when he looked in and saw the, um, the, 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 the grandmother like looking in a mirror. He thought he was looking at her, at him at first, but the, I mean, you can't see outside a window at, at night for the most part when it's mm -hmm. rolled up inside. So she's kind of admiring the fact she's admiring her youth. Mm -hmm. Then you have that big fucking like yeah, that big scar. But and like it's it rides right along there, and she had like the hair. So like yeah, she had the hair. The um. Uh, the Dre had the hat. Yeah, um, he had the, and then the other, the granddad that also had the hat that like got yeah. pulled like way the fuck down. And the, again, that seems like another big flaw. You're bringing Chris over. Everyone, put put your thing on. Yeah, but like you, it's okay. So like back in the day, you had boobs. Uh, the when they did like boob jobs, mm -hmm. they would cut like right underneath mm -hmm. where the boob met the the chest, and you had this wicked looking scar. Then they started going around the areolas, mm -hmm. which like hit it better. So mm -hmm. you figure like if this guy is a premium surgeon who has the ability and hands to cut the fucking brain out of your head. Well, the thing is, like you can squish some stuff. You can't squish a brain. You need to have the entirety the entirety of the top open. Does it get, take the entire skull cap off? I don't... Probably. I don't know. I mean, if you followed the hairline, though, like, you'd get so much more of the head off. Mm -hmm. So, but then again... I think it's it's there for, it's there to be the shot, so you can look at him and see that, like, oh, he's got the scar on his head. Yeah, but, like, I could have swore there were, like, parts where you could see Georgina, where, like, you could see that area of her head, and that scar wasn't there until, like, the very end of the movie, where know. they did, like, the pushback of the wig. Instead of it being, like, up here underneath the, mm -hmm. the wig line, it was, like... Down here in the middle of the I think, forehead. I think, I think it was a little, a little bit higher, hmm. but still, you need it. You need a visual for the. Uh, you need to show up on on film. Yeah, you need that dun dun dun. Yeah, so. you need you need it to you need to be able to point a camera at it and have everyone go. Oh, so I see it. So I wanted to talk about one little tiny thing. So uh, naturally, as you do when you watch movies like this, then mm -hmm. you go out and you you look at like what other people's opinions are. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of stuff that I believe could be a thing, but I think some people just kind of see what they want to see, but like. Apparently, there's a part at the end, near the middle of the movie, where Rose is eating Cheerios. Mm -hmm. And it's like she has the colored Cheerios and then a glass of milk, but she's like eating them separately. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were like, oh, well, that's just like a metaphor for like segregation between whites and colored people and yeah. so like like there was there was a lot of people who were like and and when they said it like well, except, I mean, you could you could you could make that assumption i just thought it was because it's fucking crazy yeah i thought it was another thing that was making her <laughs> uh, you know offsetting yeah, like just, off putting just weird where you have your bowl of cereal and then you just kind of like pick up and eat bits of the cereal and then you drink some milk separate yeah it's just it's just it's I, just weird and that's the way i took it too she's like when she's being like her cute self and like oh chris i love you so much and like she's She's doing a bit, and then when she drops it, and then she goes real fucking deadpan. Yeah, and she's got her hair pulled back in like this very tight ponytail. She's sitting like super upright, and it's just kind of like psychotic looking. Like she's just kind of cold and methodical. Yeah, and that's kind of what that puts to me. Kind of like just you, if you put your cereal in the milk, your cereal gets soggy, mm -hmm. and we don't deal with that shit. We just eat it one piece at a time when we have when we have a little drink of milk. It's just all very. Every single piece of cereal will be crunchy. Yeah, it's, I just wanted your opinion on that because when I read that, I was like, okay. I mean, maybe. I, I mean, to me, it just seems like a writ. Like, I believe very. I believe that directors will put stuff in there where I mean, people I, would be like, okay. I mean, I, I, I believe it because I mean, there was a that little bit where he's like scratching up the chair and he's like picking cotton to like stuff in his hair. So, 
kind of picking cotton be, being the um, the instrument for his his. But it served a purpose. Yeah, no, but but it was the instrument of his his freedom or whatever. So them putting little shit like that in there can, I mean, maybe. Yeah, I it's, I mean, I, I feel like sometimes directors just give people like things to like fidget with on camera just so it makes it more that shot more interesting. Like you're filling the shot more, and I believe because we are creative people who have you know great imaginations that you can extrapolate stuff from that maybe. sometimes i also think it's like youtube reviewers who are just trying to find something to add to their video i mean, I mean that could be too i mean there's also the fact that it seems a lot of the shit is set up and it's very kind of meticulously planned because i mean they hit a deer on the way up and they mentioned to the dad like oh, i killed a deer and he's like oh, i hate those i hate deer mm. if we could just wipe them all out that'd be great and down in his murder room he's got the head of a deer and so like, I wish I could wipe them all out the room where they're keeping, you know, the people before they cut out their brain. Mm -hmm. There it is right there. And then he even gets stabbed by the deer later. It's poetic. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it seems okay. planned. It seems planned to me. So maybe. Well, it's, it's, I think the funny part about it is I think sometimes they have like, um, Jordan Peele, I believe mm -hmm. he did like an interview and somebody was like, so the part that you had the girl sitting there, like eating the cereal and the milk, like separately, was that, is that like you saying about, you know, but segregation and keeping the, you know, mm. people apart. And like, I believe he was like, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> sure. If that's what you took from that, then yeah. Yeah. You know, like. I, I if I ever if I ever had the ability or the money to make my own movie, I'm gonna fill it with weird shit in the background that has that n to me no meaning, just to find out what people extrapolate from that. So there is like a, a meme essentially of like a of a Tumblr post that went kind of viral. Um, you know the Far Side. I can't remember the guy. Hmm? Uh, the one Gary who, Larson. Yeah, where he's got one with cow tools, and you've got two cows and they've got a table and they've got some tools on the, on the table mm. and some one of them kind of looks like a rake one of them kind of looks like a fork and there's a bunch of other shitty tools and what he what he did when he did that was like yeah if cows made tools they wouldn't be very good at it would they but then everyone's looking at it and goes okay well that's a rake and that's a fork what do you think that cow would do that tool for and what do you think and they start building on this kind of thing off perceived notions whatever like they pick these two things out that they could that could be a thing mm -hmm. so they start building this own head cannon as it were and then it's like no nah, i just thought cows would be bad at making tools <laughs> okay yeah no i could totally see that so uh, generally when you are a like a creator or something like that because there's been times i've run like D, D games or whatever and you guys will, and you'll bring up a point like man i really love the connection where you did this and this and you're like yeah man totally i absolutely meant to do that that wasn't just a thing you guys latched on to so I'm, in my head i'm just kind of like oh, well, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put that in the game so the only example of that that i can remember of recent because i remember talking to you at the end of the game was the mm -hmm. one where we went to the town where all the people were being mind controlled mm -hmm. and i forget what you kept saying but like every single person i think i said it once this is a thing. I said it twice as an accident, and you guys picked up on it. So I made it the thing that kind of off-put everything. Right. And I, I remember it was something it was, like the way you said hi or something like that. Hello there. Or something, or hi. Yeah. yeah. How like, are you guys doing? And like the second person just went like, hi, how are you? Yeah. And like they were all speaking like within the same cadence or something like yeah, that. Yeah, kind and, of monotonous. And, and we were just kind of like, okay, something's up. And then I remember at the end of the game, we were just like, oh, yeah, what one of the parts that like – told us was like you doing this and you were like no i picked up on y'all picking up on that so, so so i ran with it yeah so i ran with it so it's you found a clue where there wasn't a clue so i made it a clue and kind of had you lead it to well that's i mean that's just that's cla that classic D D. you yeah, you, you you put in the fish hooks and they always go for the fucking you know everything else well, it wasn't even necessarily that i just because you guys were there investigating the town so you were you yeah. were at the place where i wanted you to be looking into the looking into the incident I just had to uh, give you reasons to why, like, what's going weird in this town. And you guys found something that you're like, man, this is pretty odd, isn't it? So I'm like, no, well, just keep it going odd and seeing, see where, seeing how they go with, where they go with it. Yeah, that was a fun game. Yeah, I like that one, too. We need to talk about that one on our D&D podcast. You're going to watch that one, right? Once we, you know, put it up somewhere. Well, they were talking. Yes, you're going to watch it? Yeah. Awesome. Once you find a place to uh, put up podcasts. Yeah. Because YouTube is just... Put your stuff up here where they, they don't care. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't cost anything. Just throw it out there. And But, you know, you're also drowning in, like, billions and billions of other videos. So you'll probably never get seen unless you give them money. I'm not doing that. No. It's, yeah. We'll just keep keep making these for Amber. Yeah. Amber and Tim. <laughs> Amber and Tim. Yep. And Franklin. And let's see. And I think Daniel said he watched these. 
occasional Daniel. We get James. We know you're watching every now and then. Like, I, so, I think he say he watched. He waits for movies he's seen before. Yeah, like uh, I know my manager Ali. He's been watching some here and there, um, which makes it awkward since I've told so many burning my workplace to the ground, <laughs> crapping on the manager's desk videos that just or that comments that just makes it really awkward. Uh, but he has not said anything to me about it yet. Um, uh, I think you understand. It's hyperbole. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it's, I mean, it's not a thing you'd actually do. It's just kind of that, like everyone dreams of like starting their own business or whatever. That's the American dream. Well, I'm just saying it as an example. I also have mm-hmm. two other jobs. I could be talking about those managers and not you. Mm. So I'm totally talking about you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, to the, uh, we'll just keep doing them for like the seven or eight people that watch these videos. But you know, eventually those seven, or eight people will tell seven or eight other people. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to let us know that you're watching, there's comments down there. Put, put your stuff down there. Come on, man. Hook us up with a comment <clears throat> and a share. But anyways, um, so yeah, uh, as far as it comes to like some of the finer points of the movie, Catherine Keener I thought was awesome in it. Mm-hmm. But like the entire time she's talking, I'm hearing, "You want me to dress up like Thor? I'll dress up like Thor. I'll, I'll dress up like Iron Man." Like it just, <laughs> I, I can't. That one of my her first major roles to me was yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's the first thing I saw. Andy's her. Andy's girlfriend in the Forty Year Old Virgin. Um, but uh, yeah, like I never knew she could be that sexy, mm-hmm. and. Um, that serious mm-hmm. like t- she just she went straight sinister yeah um and like and had that kind of um therapist voice to her or whatever and she's just sitting there like stirring the cup just like oh tell me about this mm-hmm. just asking questions and you just you just answer because it's just got that calm soothing voice sort of uh melodious and it just like draws you in yeah and then she hits him with that sink into the chair and yeah sinking it's like floor. what the sink sink yeah. yeah like that when that first part time that part happened i was like Okay, she's she's the true talent um, of the like. I get it. The doctor, good hands, makes the switch of the body and everything like that. But like, she is literally the I, true it's, talent. It's what's well, kind of like in, in concert. They work with each other. It's a marriage. Oh yeah, no, mm. in more ways than one. And that you need someone there to kind of take the take the body, have enough of the brain there, and keep it suppressed to keep it working. And that's where she comes in. And then have him kind of knowing which places you can cut out these parts of the brain because that's all higher function get rid of those and replace it with a new person and it's true it's it's both of them working together that's like the only useless person in the family was like the son yeah like he just you ha- he has one fucking job and he like fails at it because he's such a he's such a weirdo plus like the whole wrestling scene yeah he's like, fucking wonky yeah it's, it's just the, it's just that that insecure white white boy that wants to uh, prove himself to everybody it's like yeah. you walk into the room and like, what's up, bro? Look at me. And he's just yeah. chest, chest pumping you. It's like, yeah. let's do this shit. I know throw it down, man. I know they're bringing you here because everyone, you know, wants to, you know, basically use your physicality uh, uh, for themselves. But like, look, look how physical I am. Look at me. I can I'm, match up. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm macho. I'm tough. I can beat the shit out of you. Yeah, here. fucking Chad. Um, <laughs> but like, he was the one, that was the only part to me that was like a drawback in the movie. Well, um, I, th- I think if you, I don't know that he's necessarily, he's weird. But he seems like the goes to the street, grabs a guy, brings him back, and they do that shit to him. Yeah. Whereas Rose is the, like, how long was she dating Chris? Five months? Four months? Something like that. And it seems like she's the movie she pulls in two people a year. Whereas in the, in the Sun, probably be pulling up, like, two people a week. Well, she was, so she was like, I, I doubt the Sun was really doing that much. I think that the when they got Dre, I think that might have just been, like, a random grab because it's yeah, like I think he's, he prowls it and looks for opportunities or whatever. Well, we know we know that when Chris found the box full of pictures, mm-hmm. we know that Grandpa, Grandma, mm-hmm. and um, now him. Yeah, those yeah. were like the primaries that we saw. Then you saw Dre, which I believe was the random grab off the street. Yeah, and then there were like other people in the pictures mm-hmm. that we didn't get to see. Um, them, so I'm imagining they're out in the world somewhere already. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, it seems like she was doing most of the heavy hitting, and I feel like he was just like, I'm gonna prove myself, and I'll go out and get somebody. Well, so. even one of the, um, I think it was um, uh, Stephen Root is the one that mentioned it. At least you got grabbed by Rose. She's got she had the better method or whatever it was. Right. Yeah. No, that's true. It's, yeah, there's like there's so many little things in oh, the yeah. movie that, that really kind of flesh it out and make it a whole story. Which I think I got more watching it the second time and just kind of picking up a lot of the subtle little subtle little things. Mm. So that once you know what it is, you can just kind of be like, oh, that's interesting. And just kind of see a bunch of the little stuff. Like the, when, when they first get pulled over 
after hitting the hitting the deer and he's like you should you show me your id and she's like well fuck i don't want this cop to see the yeah. name of a person that's about to go fucking missing so kind of pull the um you can't talk to a black man that way and like yeah. get him to walk the fuck away right yeah yeah I, I, it's you would think they would have at least one of the cops in the county on their side but yeah but yeah that that when they were doing that the first time i was just kind of like okay this feels like they're a step away from i'm a sovereign citizen mm. am i being detained like that that's that felt to me like that's how the conversation was going mm-hmm. um but like i i think it's very rare in any case it doesn't matter what skin color you are as soon as a cop is like let me see id and you're just like no i believe it just goes from bad to worse at that point um, I mean, maybe I've, I've seen videos where it goes bad. I've seen videos where it goes fine too. I think the, I think it's more of, a, of a, do you actually know what you're talking about? Because some people don't. That's and I think that's the big one. I think because yeah. the one the video I like watching is the guy who's an actual lawyer mm-hmm. and like cops will be like you know blah and he'll be like I don't have to do that and yeah. the guy's like well no you totally have to it's the law and he's like well you're a, you're a, you're a peacekeeper and you don't know the laws but I do because yeah. I'm a lawyer and then that's usually does go right yeah like the lawyer who was Uber or something like that and he got pulled over because somebody went in the back seat or whatever was doing some off shit something like, like that you need to search your car and I'm like no you don't and and here's all the reasons and stuff like that it's like well get the dogs I'm like go ahead and get the dogs <laughs> You're gonna be here for you're gonna be here for a while I'm, yeah <laughs> I got time <laughs> and I've got a camera so do your worst um but no, uh, so this was, like I said, it was Jordan Peele's first outing. Mm-hmm. His follow-up movie was Us? Us. I think so. I, that's one I've not seen yet. I've not heard, like, after Get Out, I heard people saying, like, man, Get Out. I'm like, okay, I need to throw that one on my list. Mm. After Us, people were like, yeah, Us. I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll get to that one at some point. I'm sure there's a brilliance that I'm not seeing to it because there are certain things that happen in the movie with it. They don't seem to me like they're connected but they serve a role because they bring it back up. Like there's a Hands Across America reference in there, and I'm sure, I'm sure there's something going on with that. That's like a deeper cut. But like that movie to me was just fucking weird. Mm. Um, we won't talk about it because we're not talking yeah, yeah. about that. Well, I've also have nothing to contribute because I've never seen it. Yeah, and I and I will at some point. I imagine. It's well, just you know, throw that in the fucking laundry list of shit to watch. Well, there's a rumor that I've heard that. Jordan Peele has apparently been tapped to do a live-action Gargoyles movie. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing that's going to happen. Because the article I saw that in was from five-ish years ago, posted mm-hmm. on April 1st. So I saw that thing, crunkled that up, and threw it over my shoulder. I was like, yeah, whatever. Are you sad now? Did I, did I make you sad? I never made the connection. A uh, long time ago, April 1st. I just kind of looked at it and was like, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Why, Internet? <laughs> why do you treat me this way i'm a fucking fool i'm an april fool like i swear to god i thought that was real i remember i thought it got slowed down because of covid uh, someone showed it to me and i think it might have been you it might have been um someone else and it's like hey look at this and i opened it up saw april first saw the date on it which was like five years ago and i kind of made mention like put a post on april first like six years ago whatever and that was a couple of years ago i got showed it and I'm like, I don't, I'll believe it when I see it. And also, I don't want it. Well, it could be good. I mean, so... Michael... I mean, anything could be good. But, it, I mean, it could be something remade that's good. Because it does happen. Or it could be, like, J.J. Uh, Abrams just kind of like, look what I can do with Star Wars. I'm going to make Star Wars again. Here's Star Wars. Everyone, look at Star Wars. I'm like, I don't want it. There's Stop a, it. There's a lot of people who are very happy with his first outing in Star Wars. I wasn't one of them. Yeah. Well, I was not impressed, but... Because it was like... I didn't hate it, but I wasn't impressed. It felt like a fan film. Yeah, yeah. and But, I mean, it laid a lot of seeds. That in the eighth movie, everyone was just like... <laughs> it's it's like, J.J. made the first movie, made a bunch of seeds. Then the eighth movie, so, like, Ryan Johnson was just kind of, like, plowing up the seeds. And then J.J. Abrams was... And the ninth movie was running up, putting them back in. Like, no, 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 look, 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 look. Yeah, look, look at all, look at all this, this wonderful, this wonderful buffet of seeds I laid out. And Jay, you're not going to tell me how to do my fucking movie. You're a director. You're not a writer, bro. I don't give a fuck. It's coming out. You know, like, it, it's just, it's just, it's weird. Um, but yeah, uh, the other thing that I... Let's get, get, pull up Star Wars in this thing. We can, we can always do it. No, I'm just saying that, that fucks me up that, that like, that's not a, a real story. I never made that connection. Like, I, but but anyways, I, again, I have seen one article that was shared with me, and that article was posted on Jan, on April first, uh, yeah. and it was several years ago. I never looked into it again. So um, who um, knows? Honestly, the fact that it was done on April's first that that tells me that that's 
it's it's a fucking April Fool's joke that like went completely over my fucking head. So <laughs> Maybe. I'm just shutting down on April first from now on. That's, I do that anyway. Like um, don't 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 if, do your best not to die on April first because if you do, I'll never believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though nine years later, Amber's already shown you the death certificate. You went to the funeral. You've been coming over like, to the house, and then on the tenth year, I'm just like, eh. like I fucking knew it. That's April, the, April first. That, that's the long play right there, bro. Well, then I'd show back up on April 1st, and you're like, you're not Lance, you're not real. <laughs> I don't fucking believe it. April Fool's. <laughs> but, fuck, that just, that bums me out. But what I was going to say was, like, as far as, like, good good possible live-action-ish remakes, mm-hmm. is that, so, Transformers, uh, the movie. I fucking love that movie. I'll always love that movie. Cartoon. I um, mean the original one, okay. And then, yes. I thought you were talking the about the, the Michael Bay one. No, no, no. So, but that's, to, my, to the point, is... Mm-hmm. They did the Mike. They announced the Michael Bay movies, and I was excited because, like, I'd seen The Rock. I loved The Rock. Like he had mm-hmm. he had put some good stuff out mm-hmm. at that point that I that I dug. And then the very first shot they give you of Optimus Prime being like this crazy, like long fucking truck that has the blue blue truck that had the flames down the side, and I was just like, "What the fuck is happening?" And it's like, okay, he wants it to look cool. Fine. And then there was a petition to get Peter Cullen to be the voice of Optimus Prime. And it was like, I thought that was a no-brainer. You have to get Peter Cullen to be the voice. Mm -hmm. But the petition worked, and they got him. Okay. And I was just happy to see a Transformers movie. And then Mm -hmm. I went and saw it and was like... And like I think I was suffering from like some kind of weird PTSD after the movie. Because I didn't like it. But it was like... It was better than nothing. Mm. Like, I was just excited I was getting a Transformers movie. And I watched it, and I was just kind of like, <clears throat> what happened? Like, what, what did what I was, ju- What was that? Yeah, what did I just sit through? Like, what, what happened? And then, like, I saw the second movie, and I think Amber went and saw that one with me as well. I think I might have gone I, with you yeah, as well. I think point. you were there as well. And it was just like, okay. And it almost got to the point where we're like, I'm below the testicles. <laughs> and I'm like, this movie doesn't need to exist. Yeah, I, I think that happened too. It's it was meant to be like ha ha funny, but it was just kind of, yeah, like, what is happening? You um, know, it's you don't care about this product. You just want to yeah. You, you, just, you want, just want to shoot explosions. You shoot explosions and hot chicks and, and 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 blow blow the military. Yeah, but like those movies were just like what's happening. Then they made the Bumblebee movie, mm-hmm. and like i remember a friend of mine saying well this this movie's gonna be good and i was like it's a michael bay movie it's not gonna be good then i went uh shane sent me I, I think they put out the first five minutes of the movie before the movie had actually come out in theaters because i'm pretty sure someone was like michael bay has sullied this fucking yeah, the we're reputation not, we're of not this. Gonna go watch this yeah forever no one's gonna go see it we have to drop the first five minutes of the movie to get people in theaters and i remember i sat and watched the first five of the movies and i Nick, I was crying. Like, tears were coming out of my eyes. It looked so good. And, like, Bumblebee was talking like he should be instead of making fucking radio squeaks and squawks. Like, I remember watching that movie and just being like, this is great. Like, why can't they all just be like this? Mm-hmm. You know? And I now think that, like, I don't think we'll ever see another Michael Bay directed Transformers movie. Knock on wood. No shit. But, like, that's, that's all I'm saying is, like, I know there are a lot of people that probably didn't like the Bumblebee movie. Because I, personally, to me, the face of the franchise isn't Bumblebee. It's fucking Optimus Prime and Megatron. And like I people. stopped watching after the second one. Yeah. Have you seen Bumblebee? No. All right. Oh, so, God damn it. Yep. Um, so, um, <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> Don't great. worry, he'll forget and I won't bring it up. No, I won't. I will not forget. You might forget because you said it before. I'm totally going to forget. You have brought it up to me once before and I'm like, oh, okay. And then you were like, man, I don't remember. I was going to make you watch this movie. I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and the, th- the thing that's fucked up is I've got the DVD sitting right over there by my TV. And I go and look for like my favorite movies. So, And then I'll sit there and go, have you seen this movie? How about this movie? How about this movie? I probably looked at that movie like eight or nine times. Mm-hmm. And when I'm trying to figure out what the next thing I want to make you watch is. But okay. All right, I'm going to try and remember this one. <laughs> Amber, when you watch this video in the car, call me and like remind me to tell Nick that's what I want him to watch. I'm not interested. Do it. I'll watch it anyway, but I'm not interested. Tell you what, anybody that reminds me to make him watch that movie, you pick any movie you want to and we'll review it. <laughs> Don't open up that door. Okay. You're, yeah, you're right. That's, <laughs> that's not good. But, well, you know. Let's he just... put that offer on the table and I'm throwing that plate on the floor <laughs> you're that you're that cat 
No, no, no. Nick, stop, stop. Um, all right, so uh, there's not a whole hell of a lot more that I want to say about the movie because there no. is some other things in the movie that I don't want to put I mean, out there's, there. There's a lot of little subtle stuff in this movie. I think once you kind of know the gist of the movie. Like, I think I knew the gist of the movie before the first time I saw it, and that might have ruined shit for me a little bit, but it kind of I was looking up for stuff my first time. Mm. And then seeing how it all came together after the first time, the second time I watched through it, I was just picking out a few more little like details to be like, oh, this is pretty cool. Mm. And uh, good wins in the end, which makes me happy because in a lot of these movies, you just get like the horror movies, evil wins. Mm. Like you watch The Grudge, Kayako wins, but that's cool because Kayako's the best part of those movies. I mean, can you name like five movies where evil wins? Um, there's grudge. not. I mean, there's really not a lot of them. What about the Grudge One, the Grudge Two, the Grudge Three, Jewel and Jewel? That does not count. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you pick one, uh, usually um, Kayako wins in the Grudge movies. Sadako usually wins in the wins in the Ring movies. Jason usually like doesn't win, but he's always coming back. Freddy usually doesn't win, but he's always coming back. Um, like most horror movies, like you'll beat them. Like you beat Mike 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 Myers, but he'll be back. Well, with the power of box office receipts, they oh, always come it's, back. It's 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 kind of that. In the end, you think you beat them, but they'll come back. So you just kind of more of like lay him to rest for a little bit, which is kind of like what I was expecting this to kind of be. Like you beat the evil, but in the end, you get fucked. So yeah, and, and that didn't happen. Like he beat the evil and then like he gets away. I'm like, yes, fuck those people. They were awful. I mean, you don't necessarily know that they're going to make a get out too. And the very no. first thing is Chris is going to be talking to somebody and the person's going to be like, um... Oh, watch your step there, buddy. You don't want to fall into the floor. Sink. <laughs> Sink into the floor. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it's... it's. I didn't have anything ruined for me, per se. I just mm-hmm. knew there was a lot of buzz on it. And, mm-hmm. like, one of the very first things I heard was, like, this guy's a fucking genius. He's going to make a, a awesome movies. And I was like, I could see that. Yeah. You know, like, but, yeah, he made his career out of being funny. And then he did his directorial debut. Yeah, horror movie. As a horror movie, which I thought was just a weird choice. And then he knocked it out of the fucking park. Like, I, mean, I don't it, think it, he wrote the movie or anything like that. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I honestly don't believe, and maybe this, is, this could be a hot take, but I honestly don't believe that directors should be getting as much like rah-rah, sis boom ba as they do. They do, they, 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 they put their vision of the movie from a script that someone else wrote. But it's the storyline, and it's, to me, it's more of the storyline and less of the shots. It's the story you tell, not in the way you tell it. But I think a lot of times directors will buy a script, take it, and then make it theirs, and it's a lot of and rewrite it essentially a lot of times. So he did write it. So yeah. that's that's why he's getting so like yeah the writer director. So he was writer director of this, written by and directed. So he deserves every bit of the fucking praise I, I, that he's getting. I think a lot of times when you have some of the movies where the directors are big and maybe they're not the writers it's either they like they use the same team of writers or they've taken something that someone's written and then have their team of writers rewrite it or rewritten it themselves mm. and so i was watching something with kevin bacon today and he's kind of like why is everyone getting into tv it's because the writers have more say into what gets put on tv versus mm. film yeah whereas yeah. the directors the producers the actors and movies are have more of a molding force over the story and then even once it's edited that it kind of gets pulled away from the writers a lot more. Hmm. Okay. And that's why we're getting that renaissance of TV nowadays is like from Sopranos on, as it were, where you had film actors being like, oh, fucking TV. You know, and I think they get a ba- bigger paycheck too. I don't know. Because there's like more of it, like there's more episodes, so you can get paid more per episode. Maybe. maybe. And then I think I, you I get believe like, it. and then you get like, paid every time it goes on TV or something like that. Anyways. Yeah, you can get the residuals or whatever, because I'm pretty sure Seinfeld is set forever. I mean, if you're a, a popular Hollywood director or actor, comment down yeah, below and let us know how it works. How uh, much or, money you make off TV? Uh, yeah, <laughs> if you're if you're a director um, and you want to hire me for a role so I could just see how it works, like how you get paid and how it works for like you know things going back into um, on TV, um, that'd be great. Uh, my full name and address is in the comment <laughs> down below so you can but anyways uh yeah no if yes. i didn't i didn't realize he had wrote the movie too mm-hmm. so yep good yeah. on you bro yeah that's it's, it's, it's a good movie like yeah. I, I would say if you've not seen this movie and uh g- give it a watch oh definitely yeah um this is this is a, a heavy recommend for me do you think you'll watch it again i think i will uh, it might be a couple years down the line but i mean i ended up watching it last year and here i am watching watching again this year so 
maybe in a year or two I'll be like, oh, I'll throw in the old, throw an old get out again and so watch some crazy white people. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's just watch white people get even crazier. Um, the first time I had watched this movie it was because there was a lot of hype around it. Mm-hmm. Liked it. Then I went home and like started telling Amber about it, and I shrekked her on it. So, and the with the reason I say this is that yeah, that's an inside joke that no one's gonna get. Yeah, but and I'm not gonna. But like my version of me shrekking her on it is that I told her too much of it, mm. and I ruined it. Yeah. I blew it. And then, but she, to her credit, she watched it and she liked it, even though she knew it was going into it. So now, whenever I talk to her about certain things that I really dig. And I want her to watch it. Like, I try to avoid, like, spoilers. But, yeah, like, yeah. sometimes when I talk about things, like, they do something that I really, really like. And I just want to talk about it. And, like, people aren't watching it as fast as I want them to watch no. it. So it drives well, me that's nuts. Well, that's what we have. Uh, that's what our series Have You Seen is for. Is no one is watching the stupid movies you wanted to watch. No one is watching the stupid movies I wanted them to watch. Mm-hmm. We're, we'll do it to each other. And then we'll talk about it. We'll get that shit out of our system. Giggity. And what our kind of co-videos and miscellaneous stuff in is. You put shit in the comments and maybe like that you want to talk about yeah. you know, maybe get us to watch them so the movie that Johnette wanted us to watch was um shit I just had it and it just left my head I'll think about it here at the end of the movie but uh, at the end of the review well but... I, I I think we're pretty much I mean is there anything else you want to add about this one not really other than you know it's definitely worth a watch mm-hmm. um I would Make sure you have a nice cup of Fruit Loops and a, a side cup of fucking milk. Milk um, when you watch it. Um, Eat your cereal like a psycho. Yeah. When someone says milk first or cereal first, you're like never. <laughs> 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 I eat that shit dry with a side of milk. I mean, I can understand cakes, but Fruit Loops. That's just yeah. no. It seems good. weird. It just seems weird. Doesn't yeah, see, seem right. See, Fruit Loops would seem better. Like, cakes are. You need kicks to have the right amount of sogginess. Because kind of like Captain Crunch, it like cuts up the roof of your mouth. Like Amber can just straight up eat like a bowl of kicks with no no milk on it. Like she can eat that as a snack. Yeah. I think kicks are disgusting. No, yeah, they're okay. But then again, I eat raisin bran and like almost. Everybody... Oh no, you turned old. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's what my mom ate. That that was the cereal that was in the house. So it was kind of like, for me, Captain Crunch was like once every now and again and then like because it was such a few and far between pleasure like me and my brothers would destroy a box of fucking captain crunch in one day mm-hmm. and my mom's just I, like okay i would get kicks um both cocoa krispies and rice krispies hmm. so i really like rice krispies and then um fruit loops mm. and frosted flakes because we would sometimes because dad would have the uh brand flakes whatever they were called mm. the ones that have the sport figure on a thing that oh like, Wheaties yeah yeah where you're like uh, what the f- this is- it's like you took all the shit out of cereal and just kind of yeah, let's put it down it. to what you need your body to have and none of the stuff you don't need it so it's gross yeah, Wheaties is great for your heart yeah it's because it's devoid of anything tasty yeah so it's like full on bran make you poop yeah let's just make you poop um, keep you regular <laughs> is that a thing that happens when you get older I guess yeah you need regular it's now that I've gotten older, it's like you keep track of that sort of shit. To be like, oh, no, I had a, not had a good one today. I'm I'm still running like a freaking Swiss Swiss watch. So I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I'm not. I I need help. Oh God. I'm don't worry, so, Lance. We'll catch you the weeds. I'm getting so old. <laughs> but no, I don't have anything else to contribute. All right. So I think um, that wraps up our holiday specials for for June. Yep. I'd love to t- join us in July for more holiday specials, or just every Monday for whatever we decide to throw up. We're going to have to watch Born on the 4th of July for 4th of July. There's also Independence Day. We're watching Independence Day, because Born on the 4th of July is very depressing. I don't even know what that one is. I believe it's Tom Cruise movie, where he's like a vet. Okay. Um, and I don't mean meow meow. Or woof <laughs> I'm talking like straight up like... Vietnam veteran, but yeah, anyways, yeah, yes, I got it. Um, so this was our Juneteenth special. We also wanted to say Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there because we're dropping this on Sunday. He's a dad. I'm a dad. So, um, uh, we don't know what other holidays are coming up. We don't know what other specials are coming up, but 
We are going to be paying very close attention to the comments um, in a lot of our videos. Uh, we want y'all to suggest stuff because yep. we are running into gap episodes or gap weeks. It's, we've been we've been leaving things open for co-videos, essentially stuff that we can watch on a streaming service. If there's something mm-hmm. that's like easy to find, right. like I've I've wanted to keep it somewhat easy so that we don't have to like go somewhere and rent it like back in the day. Yeah. I want it to just be a thing you can throw on. So if it's a recommend that we gave to you, you can just throw it on you can't, throw it on the TV. You can't it. rent anything from anywhere anymore. Like I can rent rent you can rent stuff from Amazon, you can rent stuff from uh from YouTube. I mean it's like four four or five dollars to rent. It's like streaming, but I'm talking like like Redbox. Redbox yeah, yeah. Redbox only has the stuff that's come out in like the past six months. Yeah, most of the stuff you rent nowadays is streamed. No. You 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 pay for it, you get like 48 hour access to it after the first time you watch it in the charleston area if you know a store you can actually go in and rent movies at put in the comments below because i'm not gonna go rent anything i will like i want that blockbuster feel no i don't don't want it anymore dude that was a great feeling like you go to the blockbuster you walk in the door you get that moldy smell that every single one of those buildings seems to have (laughs) mixed with the smell of like plastic boxes um you walk you 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 standing way too close to other people like in the store uh you're you're begging because like that was the best part about uh blockbuster video is that you had like you had like the plastic box Mm -hmm. of you know of the movie and then behind it you had the plastic box that the dvd was in no so you had the um the case that's empty and then you would have the shells behind it with either the DVDs or the uh, VHS in them. Yeah, and it was like, you know, that was the part of the guessing game is that you'd go and you'd see, like, the wall of the movie you want to see. And you're like, there's 40 of videos of it. And you're like, oh, yeah. That's the new releases. And, and then you scan it and there's nothing behind any of the videos. And you're like, oh, fuck. They're out. I have to yeah. wait. So then you have to go up to the front of the store and be like, has anybody returned the movie? And they have to dig through the fucking return box to see if they can find it for you. It's, that it was a flawless process. They need to bring it back. It's awful. Um, just let me go sit down on my bed and go. I will walk that way. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> let the movie come on as I slowly die inside. You're promoting the Wally version of the universe. I don't <laughs> like that. You have to get on your legs and go to a store and talk to people. Just saying. Uh, people suck. Counterpoint. <laughs> and um, outside is awful. And gas is like four fifty a gallon. I'm just gonna stay inside. Rent my internet. Except for you, beautiful people, y'all, y'all don't suck. Y'all are awesome. I mean, when it comes, if if there's a movie I want to buy, I, I liked what I what I liked more than going to Blockbuster was going to Best Buy and just fucking buying movies. Mm-hmm. That way, like, I still I still have my collections for when the internet goes out because it happens sometimes. Like last night, the thunder clapped and my internet was like, nope, see ya," and I'm like, "Shit!" <laughs> so I spent some time fucking around with my internet. Eventually, it came back, but I was worried it fried. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's but that's when they like, you're like, ah, fuck my internet. Then you turn towards the collection of stuff to be like, I'm not going to be bored. So that's, I guess that's the brilliant part of being old. It's just like the internet or the power goes out. And I'm like, yep, guess I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Napping is one of my favorite things well, to the, do now. The power didn't go out. It was just the, just the internet. Mm. So I, the reason why my last computer fried, lightning hit like something up front, went down the internet cable, went up to the router, and then from the router down the ethernet line to my to my pc i'm aware yeah i'm aware and, and when that shit happened again and the the router had no lights and i'm like ah fuck <laughs> i thought it happened again <laughs> it's funny because um james had the same thing happen to him mm-hmm. where like uh it hit it hit the it hit the line outside and knocked out his fucking um uh his wi-fi in mm-hmm. the house and then he bought another one, and then a couple of weeks later, lightning hit and knocked it out again. So it's like I went over to his house after he said he had replaced his uh, his um, uh, router for like the third time, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, okay. And I, I was looking through like the available um, lines to hook onto, and it was called Lightning Sucks. I was like, I'm guessing this is you, James. He's like, yes, that's me. I was like, all right, cool. Well, there's the, like the um, the power strips you can get where you take the thing, plug it into that, and then plug it into your router but that slows down your internet too so it's kind of like fried box slow internet (laughs) i'll I'll take the occasional fried box yeah i'll take the hundred dollar hit uh for a fried box so no no i I get it but all right all right we can wrap we can wrap put a bow on this one um so happy father's day happy juneteenth yeah um put in the comments below any sort of um is there anything weird movie wise that you've watched on streaming that you like I want to talk about this with somebody, but no one wants to watch Night Teeth. 
<laughs> or whatever it is. That was just random. That was just a I know, left it's, field it, pick. And it happened to be the first episode that got put up too, but like, like a third or one one that we filmed. Yeah, man. When we start, we put our best foot forward. I know. Start. Bam. Night teeth. Yeah. yeah. Bam. Fright night. <laughs> and I knew we were gonna pick. I knew we were gonna peak. Bangers. When we put up, boom. Boom. As soon as we put up night teeth, I knew we peaked. But you know, hey. But sometimes you watch a weird movie on streaming. It's only out on streaming, or it's just no one ever heard never heard of it. And now, like you watch this mm-hmm. movie, who the fuck are you gonna talk about it with? That's true. Talk about it with us. Yeah, Put please. it down below. Let us know what we want to watch. Tim, go to your weird services and <laughs> tell us stupid shit to watch. I want to watch some stupid shit. Yeah, I'm still signed in your shutter, so if you're going to make me watch, what is it called? Slacks or uh, fucking <laughs> rubber? Like, now's the time, bro. Yeah, get, get us some stupid shit to fill in some, some of these gap weeks with. Yeah, so. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on another episode. Go do something productive. Or don't. Or don't. Take a nap. But, Keep your naps two hours. Because if you got too long, too short, or too long, you either you hit me, you miss the REM cycle, or you interrupt it somewhere. Did you talk to Amber this afternoon? No. I literally got home today after we dropped Jack off at his grandma's, or I came home and I took a two-hour nap. No, oh, nice. <laughs> well, that's the reason why it's it's you have to hit the right cycle, and if you wake up like too late, your body's and I'm in the sleep. T- or two, I mean, if you go three hours or whatever, your body's like, oh, okay, we're sleeping, mm. and now you've woken up after a three-hour sleep, and it's not good anymore. You need to keep your naps like fifteen minutes. Or two hours, not an hour, not an hour and a half, not two and a half hours, two hours, 15 minutes, and kind of hit the... I'm going to have to do the research on the science on that. I've heard people talk about it. I mean, that's what I've heard. Okay. And I've noticed that if I, like, if I sleep eight hours, I'm good. If I sleep six hours, I'm not good. If I sleep nine hours, I'm not good. You kind of have to have the right amount of sleep, not too much, not too little. And the same thing works for naps. I think it's just the quality of the sleep that you have. But it's, I mean, it's the time. Too. Okay, so you take a two-hour nap. Yeah. You take a six-hour nap, and you take an eight-hour nap, and then y'all and put let us the, know. in the comments below. Let us know. Right, right. And let us know that this is. I mean, be be warned. It's not scientific. Three people is not a sample size. But have fun. Okay. Well, Nick will take a nap, and I'll take a nap as well. So five people. Yeah, five people is not a sample size either. All right. This one went off the rails. Bye, everybody. See ya.